Do you remember the subprime mortgage market in the United States? Everyone has been offered free money on, on Wall Street, individuals, households, free money everywhere. That was before the financial crisis of 2008. And now we're saying free money is also rearing its head on Nigeria's market street. You, I'm not sure you've missed that. It's on radio, it's on television, in the newspapers. You can get any money so cheap, sometimes with little or no collateral, uh, on the street as we speak, with rates so fast and with the speed of light. So we need to talk to the guys at the credit market to tell us if... There's, uh, the red light is uh, blinking. Let's bring uh, Tunde Pukwala into the conversation. He is the chairman of the Association of uh, Credit Bureau in Nigeria. Uh, Tunde, it's good to see you. Thank you very much for joining us at uh, our studios at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Straight question. Should we be worried about this easy money? Good morning. Should we worry about what? Easy money. Okay, I don't think so. Um, the credit industry is um, very active, uh, as we can see, and there's a lot of uh, activities going on in the, in the credit market at the moment. Um, the retail lending part of the market is what I think we should be focusing on now, and I think that uh, more and more Nigerians are having the opportunity to have access to credit uh, because of the issue of fintech, the issue of innovations and the new technologies that are driving um, the credit market in Nigeria. Of course, for the credit bureau industry itself uh, is a major driver of um, access to credit in, in Nigeria because the reality is that um, the credit bureau industry provides the confidence that lenders need to, to be able to lend since they house the, the data and, and the information about borrowers in, in the economy. Uh, well, you just touched a little bit about it. I was asking, about to ask the big question. What's driving the latest craze for easy money? Two hours, one hour, two days. Two days, I get my credit. I just checked it online. It's on my phone, and I don't need to fill any papers, and all of that looks too easy and too good to be true. But you said that's what is going on. You said there's no need to worry. Yeah, because, uh, you know, we are in the era of uh, technology-driven, and I mean, innovations uh, is going on. All the issues around innovation, digitalization that we are seeing all over the world is also happening here in Nigeria. And so when you have that, uh, it's, it's, it's not an isolated market as, it, as, as, you, as you might imagine. The fact is that Nigeria is also part and parcel of the global market, and a lot of uh, banks generally are moving in the direction of consumer lending and retail lending, and they don't want to be taken out of the market by not being part of that uh, system. So it's either they are doing that directly or they're doing it with uh, special purpose vehicles or in partnership with fintechs and uh, other digitalized uh, you know, vehicles that can enable them to be able to get money into the post of consumers, their customers, some of them sometimes are not even their customers, but they are able to get the data uh, and then make that money available uh, electronically. So that the, the concept of digitalization, the issue around electronic uh, you know, banking is, is, it has come to stay. And then they are backed up by, you know, infrastructure like InterSwitch, like the credit bureaus that houses a lot of data now about consumers in Nigeria. And they are able to leverage on this to be able to, to, to lend to, to them. So I, I don't think we should, we should panic uh, about this development. Well, I, I'm not so much worried about <clears throat> technology. Uh, in God I trust. But again, technology uh, is also there to believe in uh, as an enabler, uh, fintech and what have you. But this spread of easy money, as it were, you call it easy credits, coming at a time when the economy has seen three years of sluggish growth. So the credit bureau is there. You folks are doing a great job trying to verify where Boston lives, whether he has a job, what is his pay, uh, what is his biometric, and things like that, my BVN and all of that, to be sure that I can get that uh, millions. You folks, uh, uh, folks on the street, I promise it. Uh, but then, 
do you think if we keep expanding and throwing this money at people, what you call the consumers, um, what about paying back? Okay, so thank you very much. I think the, the, the what I've seen, uh, the trend I've seen in the market is that even the, the, the easy money we're talking about is concentrated in salary earners, basically. Most of the credit uh, goes to people who have jobs because before this lending takes place, there is a significant level of profiling that, that takes place. Um, so the lenders try to understand who are the customers, where are they based, where do, they, where do they work, and so on and so forth. And that's why you see that most people that have benefit of this credit are those that have jobs. Most of them working in uh, very good companies. Uh, we can, they can assume, they, I mean, they know the kind of income that they have and the capacity to pay. You know, it's important to know that when it comes to lending, uh, two issues is about the capacity to pay and then the readiness to pay. So in terms of capacity, yes, they have good jobs. In terms of readiness, they are engaged because they, have, they, are, they earn salary and they are in formal market. And I think the challenge for me is that all the things that are happening are still around the former uh, sector of the economy. And we know that quite a lot takes place outside the former sector of the Nigerian economy. There are so many people out there who are in the informal sector that don't have access to this credit that we're still talking about. Good. So, so what do, that's on the side of the lenders, know your customer, but as a borrower, what do I need to know? Do yeah. I need to worry about the charges, the rates, and the payback period, and all of that? Okay, so that's very important. I think there is a lot of education that also needs to take place uh, so that people just don't think uh, the easy time is here and they can borrow to do anything. Uh, I've seen in the market some level of outrageous uh, charges. Uh, some go as back as almost 4%, 5% per day. And that, for me, is not uh, in the interest of any consumer to take that kind of loan. And because before you know it, by the time you do five, six days, or even two, three weeks, then the, the loan has become something else, and you, have, you don't have that capacity to, to repay. So it's important to know, why are you taking the credit? What do you want to do with the credit? How long do you want to take the credit? I mean, the easy money we're talking about is they're always very short tenor kind of credit, things that people, I mean, loans that people need one, two weeks maximum, <coughs> and then they do the transaction. So it's important for consumers to know that they have to focus on things that can regenerate the loan itself. Uh, if you borrow such money and you, cons you use it for consumption, uh, then that may not be too good enough for you. So we need to do a lot of education. We need to do a lot of the fact that people should appreciate that there are inherent charges in the loan they are taking and they must be ready to pay it back as soon as possible. Otherwise, it becomes a burden to them for life. Uh, but, um Today, we appreciate that very much, and that's where the what you call the devil is in the details. Uh, because uh, you're talking about four, four to five percent mm -hmm. charge on my credit per day, yeah, yeah. So that, that happens to in some instances that we have seen, and I think because these kind of uh, loans are not regulated in any way, um, interest rate is open, is open ended. And uh, for me, I call them hot money, actually, because um, that rate is just too high. Uh, so, and I think consumers must be very conscious of why they want to take these loans. It must be pretty very important for them to take the loan. Even if you are taking the loan for business, it must be that the margin you have in, you will be able to repay both the loan and the interest. And I think this is where the issues are. Um, this is where the education, financial education is very, very important. Uh, because at the time that people want to take loans, some people just are very desperate to just take the, the loan. But then, uh, what value does it give to you at the end of the day when you look at the bottom line? You sell, uh, you have to pay with the charges. And then uh, is your business able to repay uh, the kind of trade that you, um, uh, you are involved in? Is it able to repay both the loan and the principal, I mean the principal and the charges and the interest that are associated with that kind of uh, uh, loan? So I, I think we need to do more of education, and I think consumers have to be very conscious and must take those loans only when it makes sense to do so for the purpose of adding value to their businesses, for the purpose of regeneration of earnings, and maybe to have critical resources that they need to be able to live a comfortable life.
I, I, I like this part of the conversation. Again, this is where uh, we're keeping drilling down because those regular, minute by minute, radio commercials I'm hearing on radio, driving to work every day and going home, talks more about folks who want to paint the house, buy a new refrigerator, uh, pay some school fees and what have you, and they got two million or four million just as I snap my finger. Now, that's what you call hot money here, and that is hot water. But again, because it's going to perish you for life, because if you just got four million like this and just repaint the house, Madame has a new cooker, a big deep freezer in the kitchen, and has a nice meal on the table, that is the problem. It is a problem. Good. So, so my next question. So my next question is, we're setting I mean, up a market should, here, yeah. and I'm sorry to intervene here, sorry, respectfully. We're setting up a market here in which the central bank, there's nobody regulating the interest charged by these money providers. There's nobody setting the interest rates for them. So they just feel they could charge one, two, three, four, four, five, depending on how they feel. But where do they get the money from, really? Mm -hmm. they, where do this easy money, where does it come from? Okay, so the money, I think most of them are also mobilized uh, through people who are really interested in investing and get very quick returns as well. And so the money itself is generated through um, the charges are high. I mean, the price from, for, for the sources of such money are also very high. And I believe they are also very short tenured as well. And so they have to have that margin to be able to repay the, those who gave them money in the, to give them the money in the first instance to the lenders. Uh, so it, it has to be that whoever wants to take the money, and I think you make we made reference to paying school fees, uh, buying all of those consumer items. This may not be the best kind of facility to use for such transactions. Okay. I guess the uh -huh. loan, the, cons the normal consumer loans in the commercial banks. Okay, I got one question for you, and this is one of our viewers. Uh, okay. uh, Abani says, uh, I should ask you, the real question is, how does it contribute to the GDP, and what is the probability of default? We have one minute. Okay, so um, where the loan is used for consumable items, the probability of default may be high. Uh, but if it is used for productive purposes, uh, for trade and for regeneration of uh, assets, and then that can lead to very low uh, level of default. And, and that's where education, I, I kept on talking about it, is very important for the uh, consumers. Pukwala, thank you very much for uh, this uh, educative uh, interview. Again, we thank you very much for the work your association and your firm is doing in terms of uh, providing what you call the back-end information about knowing your customer that goes into this entire thing. At least we're achieving something with the Credit Bureau. And we have more time in the future to talk to yeah. you about uh, what's going on there with the executive order uh, in terms of the uh, Credit Bureau. Thank you very much for raising the curtain for us here on the program. Tundi Pukwala, the chairman, Association of Credit Bureau.